Hey guys, what's going on? It's your uh, boy Dennis from here for Splendid Entertainment. I'm here with... Well, I'm Owner 2 Cal, the writer director of The Misogynist. And Jamie Block, uh, I played the part of Baxter. So for people who are not familiar with your film, because we're in the 25th anniversary of the Hampton International Film Festival, can you give us like a 60 second synopsis of it? I'll do the first part, you finish okay, it, okay? It. Uh, it's about no. two, it's, a, it's on election night, uh, 2016. It's uh, two men in a hotel room celebrating the election results and, and uh, different people come in and out of the hotel room as the night progresses. We get an idea of the emotions of that night. Every, there were every, everybody in the country was experiencing something, whether if it was shock, joy, profound, abject terror, it's about the kind of emotions of that night. In addition to that, and at the same time, it's also a movie about a profound uh, breakdown of a man, mm -hmm. which parallels some of the uh, the events of that particular night, where, so, where everyone remembers where they were. So obviously this was shot after the election, is that correct? Yeah, I, wrote, I think I did the copyright for the first draft uh, eight days after the election. I think it was two, I, I looked at my notes, it was November 17th is when I had my first draft copywritten, and then there was probably eight other drafts after that. So we spent I mean, six months writing, mm -hmm. rewriting, working with the actors, working with uh, Dylan Baker and Jamie Block. We're not working with Dylan that long, but working with Jamie for a good two or three months, we, you just did the work on your own, just learning the dialogue. Then There's we a lot of dialogue. And then so. we, yeah, it was a 150 page script, normally, you know, which could be like a two hour movie, but it ended up being like a 90 minute movie. And we shot in May, and so I guess uh, almost to a year after he got elected, we have a movie that premiered yesterday at the Hamptons. It was a great, uh, great screening. So, so we're almost we're almost at the one year anniversary. Not well, it's going to be no, it's about a month, not even a month. God, away. we beat it by a we month. We beat and it a by half. a month. <laughs> we we cleared that. You got finished. speed racers. Got well, today, <laughs> one of our actors, Matt Walton, told me that today is the anniversary of when last year it was revealed that Trump was secretly recorded saying all that stuff about grabbing women's vaginas mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff and about power. Is today the ninth? Is, is it the ninth? Um, or eighth and seventh? Or whatever. I know, what, whatever. It's one year it's anniversary. It's, it's, we're close that, to the one year anniversary. But this movie is also kind of about that idea too, about being judged about use of language and how we've cut, the society, has, the culture has become such a culture that you have to very, very be protective of what you say because mm -hmm. people are so sensitive. And the idea that Trump went against the grain um, actually went the opposite way of uh, creating a safe space cultural uh, environment saying, look, it's freedom of speech, it's our, greatest, uh, it's our greatest right as citizens, I'm going to exploit that in ways that a president shouldn't do, but doesn't mean should not do, and it worked for him. Like, and this movie celebrates his kind of ribald kind of aggressiveness, you know, and his fearless kind of um, approach to language, you know. And especially there's a lot of countries in, uh, throughout the world that don't have that freedom of speech because they're going to that too in the movie. Yeah, yeah I, I'm Turkish and like, you know, and I have a lot of Muslim relatives, so we also tap into the fact that you don't have freedom of speech in Turkey and we, 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 don't, we tap into it a little bit. We also tap into the, uh, some of the misogynistic aspects of Islam. Like, mm -hmm. everybody is pretty much called out for the hypocrisy in the movie. Yeah. And that's what's kind of lovely about it, you know what I mean? We've all, if you think about the year 2016, the whole election year, it was an obnoxious year for everyone. You know what I mean? The political pundits who laughed and scoffed at Trump, the rhetoric. I mean, that, how many know, people who were supposedly knew what they were talking about said, you know, this is entertaining for now, but there's no way he's actually going to win. Yeah, I mean, right. over they, they, they and over. They took him as kind of like the Up until the actual late on the night of the election, until yeah. finally people were like, wow. So, and seeing uh, people transition like on the election night from in a way that they were so sure of Hillary winning to as election results were coming in that like in a way grin for the Hillary supporters turned into like a, a frown to some extent sure, yeah, so that you see the transition. I mean, I will also say, too, I mean, Orners wrote this, mm -hmm. and we were all amazed when he turned it around so fast, but it is, you know, I want to say it's it's not a, it's political, but it's also very entertaining, and it's very funny, and it touches on all sorts of, of topics that everyone is, is feeling in the culture today. So it's, I just, you know, you don't want to toot your own horn as much, but I'm going to toot it for you <laughs> and say that we are all amazed at, at, at this script, the whole cast, the crew, he came up with this. It's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant. Um, and if the actors aren't good, the script's worthless. And, and, and Block and Dylan and the rest of the cast did an amazing, amazing job. So I'm returning the favor. All right, that's true. nice. But it's I didn't true. say that to <laughs> no, have I you know, say that. I know, I know. But I mean, I appreciate it. But I mean, really, and you know, and then right sitting here before a month before the actual anniversary, we have a movie of the events of that. It's fantastic. So we're, well, so, for we're me, very proud. Yeah, and you, for me, it's like you know, if art and, and the film is therapy for me. Like I, I, I get, I produce. 
I'm very prolific when I, there's a kind of an, I have, I'm having myself an emotional crisis. I'm fearful of the future. I'm anxious about something happening in my life. That um, inspires me greatly to write. You know, so. so because it is set in a hotel room, I'm just wondering where'd you guys shoot it? We shot at the Marmara Hotel somewhere in kind of mid. Is it Midtown? It's like in the 30s, wasn't it? 30, like 30th Street, like Fifth Murray Avenue, Hill kind of Fifth thing. Avenue, yeah. Kind of well, no, it was on Park. Off it was of towards Park. East. It was yeah. towards East. And how long uh, takes from uh, shooting time? We seven days in the hotel, and there were three or four days for other locations. About 10 to 11 okay. days. Because even though it, you know, probably 65 percent of it takes place in the hotel room, there's also uh, J Jamie Block plays a character named Baxter. He's kind of Cameron's uh, protege. Is that right? Yeah. Would you say? So I'm in the hotel room with my boss, mm -hmm. and he's extremely excited to Trump. When I'm excited too, although you find out later in the movie that I, there's other issues that I'm, I might not be telling the truth when I'm with Cameron or with other people. But anyway, we're in there, and and then there's, like Warner said, about two thirds of the way through. Well, the you, film. you have we have your wife too. Your wife is at home, so we have we go to the home and see the home, and she represents kind of a. And she's liberal a women, liberal yeah. women who are very upset about what happened, are also and liberal and lots of people. So she has that point of view. There's also kind of a there's a Mexican student who goes to Columbia. Who um, he's a, you know he's from Mexico and, and he's he bursts the, upon the scene. He delivers the food <laughs> and you and you assume that these people are going to have certain political rights. We yeah. try to defy your expectations and go the opposite way. There's a liberal male who comes in and can def defend Hillary yet right. voted for Jill Stein. So there's kind of all the and there's like the in the, in the Mexican um, the waiter who brings the food and delivers the food. He's kind of aloof and apathetic about whether Trump will build a wall or becomes an isolationist and he didn't even vote so it's like the idea is it kind of like celebrates um, everyone's political views and how they led to Trump's uh, election and you know there I think there could easily be a movie or two made in, in the next year with these characters because on the I think on election night we're all it was such a shock for so many people that it didn't bring out their best mm -hmm. we're never at our best when we're really scared you know so I think even you're, you're a lot of these characters, even Dylan's character, as reprehensible as he is, and how seemingly suicidal and destructive he is, he's just having a bad night because right. he's terrified about being alone. And on another given night, he could be a really beautiful man, sweet man, probably. Absolutely. Um, and it's a very cool concept because each character represents a segment of the population of the United States or international in a way. That, that's the interesting part. But like I so said, we talked about that we're in the, uh, it was your premiere here in the Hamptons International Film Festival, and we kind of talked a little bit off camera. So you guys are doing a bunch of uh, festivals uh, throughout the country, international, but how can people stay in touch with the film as the upcoming dates, as you guys do the festival run, as there's a website, social media? No, we don't have that yet. We don't have the website yet. No? Or even a what did you say thing? before about which, the way Trump uh, moved around the barnstorm around oh, the country? We, we, we're barnstorming we, we, we this considered movie. maybe trying to get a Sundance and premiere it in January and like submit the movie. And, mm -hmm. and what, you know, we, we, the, the, thought of, the thought of, yeah, the yeah. thought of waiting for the big festival in January while this movie I think is so valuable right now. Mm -hmm. Like this movie is like really, it's not just of the moment, mm -hmm. it's also looking into the future. A lot of things that it's going, in the, in the that Trump is gonna do in the future, it's already been kind of preordained in this movie, but it's also because um, politics are cyclical and all of our, the, the things that we're upset about or afraid about or the political talking points, they've been they're locked in like this cycle this kind mm. of vicious cycle so this movie is so kind we didn't want to wait we this movie is connected to the past it's of the moment but it's also tapping into something in the future so, so I, I think it's going to gain in value every day that it's out course. every every audience that sees it it's going to build momentum and we had a great screening last night and people were talking saying the right things about it which is this movie is fascinating it's it's really really smart really really funny really unexpected but it also i ex expected it to be one thing and it was something else right. that was you, the best compliment well i, I thought i you know because you know it's about two Trump supporters and they're and they're and they're bashing liberals the whole time. <laughs> but li people, liberals were coming up to me yesterday, intelligent liberals, and uh, or, or whether well, dumb liberals and smart liberals, dumb conservatives, smart uh, conservatives. I put myself in the dumb liberal camp. <laughs> <laughs> Roundly, uh, okay, but, 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 I, but I've gotten so dumb that I'm now moving to the right. So it's like the dumber you get, maybe the more you move <laughs> to the right. So it's like anyway. But the bottom, I'm kidding around and saying that for you, Bob, because you are officially moved to one spectrum or the other. And you go back and forth. Oh, I depending on who I'm. Talking talking to and I think where it'll get, I'll get me then I'll that's the I'm sorry you want to wrap up here 
the bottom line is we're going to so, go from yeah. we're going to go from the Antunes Film Festival to the Ben Film Festival. Then we're going to go to the Pol uh, American Film Festival in Poland. Then we're going to the Indie Man Film Festival for the 15th or 25th anniversary. I think it's the 15th anniversary. I think Denver Film Festival is having their 25th anniversary. Mm, we're wow. going to go to that, and we're going to go to Kukaloris, which is having like their 25th. As anniversary. Trump roamed the country, <laughs> gathering voters, we are going to roam the country and the world. So that's world. a bunch of different festivals. So do you guys have any sort of Facebook or social media? No, no. The, the movie so is just, called, no. just keep googling, googling the film to keep track with that. That's the misogynists. Yes. Google, 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 Google my name, Warner Tukel, and then I'm on Facebook. I'm always just posting shit on my Twitter feed, <laughs> of course, on my Facebook account. But like we don't have that, an that's what Twitter is for anyway. But it's the misogynist. That title alone, you can't yes. escape that uh, cool. that title. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'd love to stay up to date with you guys. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. And then your personal projects in the future, and we'll take it on from there. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Take care.